a lot of people call me and they'll say, uh, do you have an example of a communications plan? I get this at least once a week. Can, can you send me your communications plan because I want to copy it? And I'll say, look, I can't, I can't do this for you. You've got, to, you've got to sit down on your computer. You've got to figure out these elements. What's your message? What's going to be said? What's the medium? Where it's going to be said? And the target, who do you want? message to reach. And you've got to go through that. It still can go wrong. So what, what are the main ways that our communications plans fail in some instances? Well, one of the things is that it's too media-centric, and we're not focused enough on external affairs, meaning we're just putting out information. We're not communicating to our partners, our allies, our advocates, uh, our associates. Maybe it's our internal that we're not reaching as effectively as we can. We just put out a tweet and go home which is what some organizations have done. I've done it. Okay, my tweet's out. We're not engaging in two-way communication and seeing what people are saying. We're going to try and sell this beautiful BMW 1i8 Roadster right here. Mr. 15th Century, welcome. Welcome to uh, uh, Slovakia. So good that you you joined us today. Car salesman, how are you? How's the market? You sell a lot of cars? It's, it's booming. It's booming. Yeah. It's booming. Okay, sell this man this car. Okay, so I bet you uh, don't like to travel these days a lot uh, in your carriage anymore because it takes, uh, like, for instance, several days to go and see your cousin. Okay, so remember, I've got to make this message. This gentleman has to make this message personalized. He's got to make it emotional. This is probably, we're not, and, and factual, and factual is going to be tough because this guy, not a lot of formal education in the 15th century. Um, and, and have that call to action. So we're going to think about how we want to get to this person. And this person represents the average person that your NGO is trying to communicate to because they're not following every tweet that these guys are putting out. They're not, they're, they're, so so we've, got to, we've got to find ways to communicate with this guy. With our, and, and this represents our NGO here. This is our customer. This is our the person we're trying to reach. So what did we learn from this, this if anything, from this process? What are we trying to do? Use simple language to get and, and language that relates to people. Any idea what those numbers are? The hours that users will have spent on the internet in just this year. In 2018, so like again, I'm not good with numbers, but there are 4 billion internet users in the world and the average internet user spends 6 hours a day daily six hours on the internet so it's an opportunity for us because there are four billion people who are potentially our users who can be potentially disposed to our information who can be potentially influenced by us and they spend six hours a day on the internet so there is a good chance that they can learn about us somehow but then there is an obstacle because there is one billion of again one and nine zeros one billion web pages out there. The web pages. Can you imagine the competition? 52% is the percentage of people accessing internet via their mobile phones. So it's more, it's more than on all other devices combined. 11 new users of social media join networks per second. Basically this is how it works. The behavior of the uh, social media user, they do not want to click out of the social media. So if you have on your Facebook account the link to your website that tells about your beautiful research, most probably it won't be clicked. Even though people spend six hours a day on the internet, they don't want to spend a lot of time. So they want your information to be quick, precise, to just, you know, read the heading, view the cute video or whatever, just like, you know, very fast. But content is also important because it's like you can see it on this picture, content is like water. Whatever shape you put it in, it will look like, you know, so you have to consider it uh, for sure uh, in the mobile age before, uh, before you make everything. Think about what platform you will be distributing it at. The trend is that uh, marketers do not advise using those super million uh, followers, celebrities anymore. 
but look for local influencers, micro-influencers, people who have 10,000 followers, uh, but they are native followers, to say, engaged audience. Maybe it will be a journalist, maybe it will be someone who is like closer to your situation, and his following is smaller, but he is more influential. His opinion on this point matters. People listen to him. The thing about uh, communication is that it has to be interconnected. Everything you do, everything you do has to be connected to each other. So if you do use your website on a daily basis and very actively, have the huge banner like join us on Facebook or on, so on like Twitter or whatever you are. This is the marketer's rules. So consumer need to see your message at least seven times before he even considers buying, before he even notices it. So like be active everywhere. By now we should know, uh, we should know who are we telling it, what are we telling, and how we're telling it. Now let's change the stations for the last time and try to make that little piece yes. and post it to our closed group on Facebook. What I want to hear is who is your audience okay, so and then tell us about uh, what is your uh, goal question, of this post uh, and then tell us about or producers. show us the post you are doing. Use. So guys, uh, tell us about your audience. Um, so since we are using uh, Twitter as our main platform, our audience are journalists and professionals uh, with higher education. Uh, also experts and stakeholders, uh, which is the main group uh, which is using Twitter in V4 region. And uh, also uh, they are range between 20 to 50 years old and they have a higher education. Okay, so there is the graphic part that is supposed to grab attention. There are um, hashtags that will help users find this information and there is a link to the actual report. Very good. You could also tag Globsack on Twitter. Very good. We've brainstormed for only 20 minutes and we came up with different forms and types of contents for, for all four platforms, major platforms. We actually do have content we have to, to package and repackage for different social media. We just need to give it a thought, think out of the box, don't use just computer. Uh, to use it, talk to your fellows, talk to someone you trust in this matter, get inspired by other organizations. Uh, I will explain you how to choose right content uh, for different platforms. You know that the platforms are changing. And we never before lived in such beautiful time. Can you imagine before, in order to be exposed, we had to pay a huge amount of money to uh, TV channels, newspapers, or to have our people in, um, in uh, conventional media. To, to say about our, our activities. Now, we have thousands of platforms, thousands of instruments, and for majority of them we shouldn't pay. The only thing is uh, how we organize ourselves and do we reach potential audience. Why important to choose right content for right platforms? First of all, competition for attention. We have like only five, maximum five seconds of person's attention. And if we are not interesting enough, we, if we are not emotional, engaging enough, the person is going uh, to another post, or it got notification from her, his uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, or he or she heard the sound or podcast or something else. So, uh, if we choose the right content with the right form, we can have attention of the user for a longer time. The second, algorithms. Algorithms are important as never. For majority of YouTube stars, um, the relevant content, recommended content in the right column of the screen is the most important. They come not from uh, paid advertisement, not from Facebook. They come from this right column. And this right column is formed according to algorithms. And the same about newsfeed of Facebook, newsfeed of Instagram, the newsfeed of uh, even only maybe Twitter, you know. It's... And the third, yeah, audience behavior. In each country, the behavior, the habits are different. In some countries, let's say in Caucasus, people like everything, like comments, shares, they like the content, you know. But in countries like Belarus, you know, people are so shy, they're afraid of dictatorship, and they see a lot of content, but they don't like anything. Because they're afraid to like, they're afraid to comment and to leave any footprints, you know, in the internet. And as a result, we have millions of likes for Azerbaijan Radio Free Europe service, and zero for Belarus. 
So this is also important, how people behave, do they trust this platform, do they trust your page? 